Hi, I'm Quantic Dev, and today I will give you the optimum solution to maximum minimum subarray problem, the Cadence algorithm. The problem at hand is simple. Given an array of integers, find the subarrays with the maximum and minimum possible sums. Cadence algorithm solves this problem with a nice O n time and O1 space complexity. A variation of this problem is when you are trying to find the maximum minimum sum subarray with at least k elements. Again, a slightly modified version of Cadence's algorithm can be used in solving it. Finally, we will prove the correctness of Cadence's algorithm. When all integers in a given array are positive, you can use the much simpler sliding window technique. For arrays with negative numbers, you can modify it to be all positive numbers and then apply the sliding window technique. But that requires extra processing, hence it is not the optimum solution. I have a separate video discussing the sliding window technique in depth, along with various sample questions, and you can find the link to it in the video description below. Cadence algorithm uses optimal substructure to solve the max min subarray sum problem. Each max min subarray encoding at each index is calculated using the max min subarray ending at the previous index. You can say that this is an accumulation function with some edit rules. As a result of this, it is one of my favorite examples of dynamic programming. In the video, I will explain how Cadence algorithm is an optimal substructure problem using a basic animation. All right, now let's start with a real world question. This is a medium difficulty one, and it asks us to find the maximum minimum subarray sum. Given an array of integers, find the subarray with the maximum minimum possible sum. Here's our example input. And as always, I would like to iterate that you might not be always given an example input. If you are not given one, create one for yourself so you can work on it. And let's continue with the requirements analysis. As always, ask for clarifications at the requirements analysis step. Always do your requirement analysis first and always ask questions. So for instance, in this question, this part is a bit vague. Maximum, minimum, possible sum. What does that mean? I'm asking the person being interviewed to write a function to find both of these at the same time, optionally with a given parameter. Analyze the requirements even in simple questions. Sometimes the questions that look quite simple are one of the hardest ones. And in this question, the input size could be anything. So we should limit the memory usage. You can be given an array of all the data in your hard drive. It could be tens of terabytes. For this question, we'll have to keep the memory in check. We should be able to handle the negative numbers. In my previous videos, we have seen examples with all positive numbers, but in this one, we have negative ones also. So let's continue to the problem analysis. It's always a good idea to list the requirements and your problem analysis on the whiteboard. If you are not working on a whiteboard, but working in a whiteboard application online, most of them have a feature to be able to add notes to the site. If you have none of those, just bring a paper and pen so you can refer back to these later on. Now the input size is unlimited, so the memory can blow up if we are not careful of what we keep in memory. So this means we cannot pre-calculate and store all possible variations of all array sums, otherwise the memory will blow up. And this is the brute force approach we will see in a moment. And we can't use recursion. If we use recursion, the call stack will overflow. And as always, think of corner cases like empty array, all negative numbers, all zeros, etc. And not only think about them, but also write your tests based on those corner cases so you won't get a low mark from your interview for not thinking of these cases. So let's apply the brute force approach. Calculate all possible subarray sums and store them in a separate array. So let's start by calculating the subarray sum from the first element. This is one. Let's calculate the first two. This is three. Let's calculate the first three, first four, and all of them all the way to the bottom. Then we're going to go into the second element, calculate the sum, calculate this sum, this sum, and all the way to the bottom again. And we're going to move on to the third one and do it again, 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 again. And we will have to process the array over and over again. And once we populate our sum array with all possible sums, we are just going to iterate it and find the maximum and the minimum sums and just return it from there. The time complexity is going to be approximately n squared, which is ridiculous. And again, the space complexity will be approximately n squared. So 
both the time and space complexity is, is exponential. And if the input is unlimited, we're going to use unlimited time and space. So this is not a good solution. So let's see the optimum solution, the Cadenz algorithm. For this algorithm, we're going to start summing the elements, starting with the first element. And we're going to record the sum as zero. If the current sum is greater than the maximum sum, assign it to the maximum sum. If the current sum is less than zero, we will restart summing from the next element. The time complexity for this operation is going to be on, because we're going to process the subarray only once. And the space complexity is going to be O1, because we don't have to recreate another array or store any extra information per element. All the memory that we will be using will be defined from the start and it's going to be constant. Inverse, less than and greater than checks to find the minimum subarray sum. So this algorithm up to this point is to be able to find the maximum sum. Just reverse, reverse these, greater to be less and less to be greater and you're going to end up with the minimum subarray sum. So let's go ahead and do it. Here's our example from the question. And here's our maximum sum, starting with index 0. Let's find out the subarray sum, which is obviously 1. Now our global maximum sum is 1. Let's continue expanding our sum. So the sum of first two elements is 3. So maximum possible sum is now 3. Let's continue summing more elements into our sum window. And now the new sum is minus one, which is less than our global maximum sum of three. So what do we do here? We cannot continue adding more elements to this because our sum fell below zero. That is not acceptable. So we're gonna reset our sum window, starting with the next element. So here we go. At the next index, our sum is three, which is the same as our global max. So we do nothing. Let's continue expanding our sum window which is 3 and 4, which is 7. And we successfully found a new global max. So let's continue adding more elements. And the new local max is 5, which is less than our global max. So we do nothing. And here we go. This was our global maximum possible sum. We can either return the value itself or just the subarray itself. And that's going to be our solution. And that is how simple the cadence algorithm is. Now, why does this work? We started with this sample input from the previous question. And now let's think of a dynamic programming sum problem, starting with the first element. What is the maximum possible sum at index is equal to zero? Well, we have nothing before it. So the maximum possible sum is just one, the value itself. Now, what is the maximum possible sum at the next index? Well, we know the maximum possible sum at the previous index. So if we add this value to the next index's own value, we'll end up the maximum possible sum at the next index. So we're going to calculate the maximum possible sum on the following index. We know the one before it, which is 3. And we add this to the current index's value, which is going to be minus 1. Now we have a problem. Our maximum possible sum fell into the negative zone. So what we do, we call this just zero and continue summing starting with the next index. So we successfully reduced problem of finding the maximum possible sum at an index to the problem of finding the maximum possible sum at the previous index plus the value of the current array. So the rules, maximum subarray at every index is equal to the maximum sum subarray at the previous index plus the element value at the current index. If the maximum sum at the index is less than zero, we just set the sum at that index to zero. Now let's mathematically define this function. Maximum sum function at index is equal to the maximum of these two, which is maximum sum at the previous index plus the value of the, of the current index or zero. Whichever one is greater, we just return it and that happens to be the maximum sum at the index. And that is that simple. If in an interview situation, you are asked to write pseudocode or just a mathematical expression, that is it, you don't have to do anything. If you have to write code and you want to see the solution coded in an actual programming language, I have the solution on GitHub and the link is in the description below. Now, here are some tips. 
you can use a modified version of sliding window technique instead of Cadenz algorithm. It is simpler, but not as efficient. If you are interested, I have the link to my sliding window technique video in the description below. Cadenz algorithm is just a specialized accumulation algorithm. You will frequently see it in similar accumulation algorithms in programming interviews. And as I said, the code for all these questions and answers, along with their tests, are on GitHub. And the link is in the video description. Now, let's move on to the second question. This is where things are getting a bit spicy. We can apply the sliding window on Cadenz algorithm. So here's the question. Given an array of integers, find the subarray with the maximum, minimum possible sum with at least k elements. Now, this is exact same question that we have solved before with an additional rule. The subarrays should have at least k elements. So what does that mean? With the given example input, we have the exact same example array, but with k equals 3. So we will have to find subarrays with at least 3 or more elements. So let's do it. Let's solve this question using sliding window on a cadence algorithm. Now we're going to apply the Cadenz algorithm to the array and store the maximum sum up to every index in another array. Here it is. As we have done in the previous example, I've calculated the maximum sum at every index and stored the values in this array. So this array is made up of maximum sum at every index. Now we're going to use a sliding window of k elements on the example array. And then we're going to check if the maximum sum at the previous index makes the sliding window sum bigger. So let's do it. Let's start with the k equals 3, 3 element sliding window. What is the sum of the sliding window? It is 1. And what is the maximum sum at the previous index? Well, there's nothing in the previous index. So the maximum sum of this sliding window is minus 1. So the global maximum sum up to this point is just minus 1. So let's slide our window. What is the maximum sum at the next window? It is 1. Now we're going to go to the maximum sum at the previous index, which is 1. So what do we do? We edit to find the maximum sum of this bigger subarray, which is 2. Now let's continue doing this. Let's slide our window once again. What is the sum of the subarray? It is 3. Now we find the maximum sum at the previous index, which is 3, which means the sum of this bigger subarray is 6. Let's verify if it is actually 6. Let's sum all the elements. 4, minus 4, 0, 3, 3, yes, it is 6. So our algorithm is working. It found the maximum possible subarray up to this point is 6 between indexes 0 and 4. Now let's continue sliding our window. What is the maximum sum of this subarray? It is 5. And let's find the maximum sum of at the previous index, which is 0. So the maximum sum of this subarray and ma maximum sum of this subarray are 5. So yeah, the bigger subarray with the maximum possible sum of 6 is the solution. Now, we found in the previous question that this was the maximum possible subarray. But as you can see, it has only two elements. According to our equation, we need to find subarrays with at least three elements. So that is why this bigger subarray wins with only a sum of six. The time complexity is going to be 2n. We're going to calculate the maximum sum at each index per element, and we're going to slide our window per element. So 2n time complexity, and we're going to have O n space complexity. Now we can improve this. We don't have to create this array from the start. We can calculate each element as we slide the window. So we don't have to store all of this thing in the memory. I did it to be able to explain this question, but you can improve the space complexity by calculating maximum sum at each index as you need it and discard an unused memory. And let's prove this algorithm. Let's formally define the maximum sum at an index. And the maximum sum at an index is the maximum of all possible subarrays 
and their sums. So we're going to calculate all possible subarrays as we did in the brute force approach, and we're going to find the maximum of all of them. So this notation sum x to i means the sum of elements from index x to i. In that case, what is the sum of elements from index x to i plus 1? Well, it is the sum of all elements from x to i plus the next element. That's just simple as that. Why did I write it? We're going to combine these two facts together and create the next max sum array. So let's do it. Maximum sum at the next index is just the maximum sum at every index plus element i, as we described here, which is also equivalent to this. So why do I nest maximums like this instead of just separating them with commas as we do here? Well, both are valid. You can nest maximums into each other infinitely as much as you want, or you can just comma separate them. I just nested it once because I'm, I want to use a property of max function. Which property that is? It is the fact that the maximum of a plus y, comma b plus y, comma c plus y is equal to maximum of a b c plus y. Well, this seems pretty simple, isn't it? It doesn't matter if I add y to each element or just compare each element themselves and plus y. Well, why do I write the simple fact here? Because now I'm going to combine these two and come up with this. What did I do here to modify this into this? I just took all the element i's from inside it and put it here at the end of the function, just as we defined here. So why do I do this? Because if you look at this, that is exactly how we defined the maximum at index i, which means now I can write maximum sum at i plus 1 index as the maximum sum of maximum sum at the previous index plus element value at that index or the element value itself, whichever one is bigger. Now, note that I use this notation set. I said that maximum sum at index plus 1 is equal to maximum sum at the previous index plus the index value itself or 0. Well, both of them are fine. If you use 0, your algorithm will be slightly simpler which is why I used it, but you can use either of them and come up with a correct algorithm. You can also use induction or contradiction to prove the Cadence algorithm. We used simple high school math to prove this algorithm, but you can use contradiction to prove the same algorithm, which is a little bit simpler, and you can also use induction to use pretty much any dynamic programming algorithm. I will try to use all of these methods at least several times, in my future videos so you will get acquainted with them. Here are some more tips. In interviews, you can always get questions combining multiple algorithms and techniques. This will make the question a bit harder, but it will also give the interviewer the opportunity to measure your approach to a more combined question. You can be asked to prove the correctness of an algorithm in a more senior interview. I wouldn't expect you to be asked to prove an algorithm in a more junior situation, but as you get more senior, it is expected that you will have a deeper understanding of all of these algorithms. Check out my algorithms playlist to see rest of the algorithm and interview questions videos. The link is in the video description as always. And finally, link to my dedicated sliding video technique plus four questions video is also in the video description below. And that is it. If you like to see more algorithm videos, give the video a thumbs up so I will know. And if you want to see the upcoming interview question videos, don't forget to sub, so I will see you next time.